of time with me, you know that I love goats and I will spend, you're going to spend a fair amount of time drawing goats because I love goats. I just think they're fantastic. I mean, I love their crazy brick eyes. <laughs> I love their, their faces. I love how they look at you. Everything is kind of fun about this. What I also love about this particular, and I'm getting ready to go to my favorite farm for two weeks, uh, two days uh, uh, after class tomorrow. So I'm gonna have a full slew of new goat and horse and cow photos for you, um, for us to come. Uh. Um, but one of the things I wanted to talk about, uh, which I think is a mistake people often make, uh, with animals is that you, you tend to make, uh, we tend to make, have you ever noticed that you tend to make your nose too skinny and too long, right? So you think you're getting it right, you know, because the animal has a long skinny nose. And uh, what's happening here is something called, and particularly in this position, is something called foreshortening in drawing. And it's a helpful thing to look at. So I want to put this up here for a second. I actually would like to challenge you to just do a quick sketch with me uh, to look at the concept of foreshortening. Oh yeah, and this is also like a super helpful like drawing. So I'm going to like put this in. So what is foreshortening, right? What's happening, and you can see this in the arm here, is that when, some, when you're looking at something straight on, you can see the length of it. But as you start to raise it, notice that as you start to raise it forward, right? If the, it, if the thing is coming forward, so here in this case, the arm is coming forward. Notice how two things happen. One is that this fist that's in the front gets bigger. And notice the back becomes much shorter, right? So hence the term for shortening, right? As things come forward, what's extending them shortens. Uh, a little bit of the same thing happens when we draw a road. So when we do this, right? There's a bit of foreshortening happening here. The front of the road is bigger. And as the road goes back, it becomes more truncated. But it's smaller, skinnier, um, and this front part is wider. I mean, we know, right, if we're standing on a road, that it's not like rising up and it's not getting smaller. But we know that that's how it looks to us. And so that's when we're dealing with drawing, that's how we have to draw it. Does anybody have any questions about that before we go on? Does that make sense? So when a nose, an animal nose particularly, is coming towards you, Right? It's, I have another one for when I break this out, right? This front part of the nose and the mouth are much bigger. And this part that extends it back becomes shorter. So, and that's because this, if you want to think about it, We were drawing this like it was a cube, right? This part is the part that's in the front, and this part is the part that's going back. Got it? So very cool. We're, I'm gonna we're gonna get into this for a second, but I'd like you to follow along with me and sketch this out with me. I'll walk you through the steps. Just easy, quick sketch. It's the same thing with the hand, right? So, and and the other thing I know is that in general, if something's extending, I tend to like to block, use that to block out everything else and measure everything else. So for example, here, I know that this is a box. The width is the same as the height. So I'm gonna sketch in a, a box. I'm gonna check my height the same as my width. Eh. 
ahead and sketch in this box. See how I'm checking? Yeah. So my height is the same as my width, right? And then I'm going to notice that if I bring this box up, so it doesn't matter how big you make your box, you can make it big or small. Here's box one. If I go up, box two lines up right with this sort of third of the head. Okay. And I also see that if I come over, if you'll notice, the arm is about half a box, right? And same at the shoulder, right? Half a box, wide. And this distance is also, yeah, almost about exactly half a box. So when I come up here, no matter how big or small this is, okay, so here's where my head is, and halfway out here is where my arm, my shoulder ends. You'll see I'm drawing a little line that extends a little farther left. A straight line down. And then an angle line down like that. Right? So none of these lines are parallel. This is not the same angle as this. And this is not the same angle as this. All the straight up and down lines are straight up and down. There we go. A little bit better. This could probably get in even more. But look at this. Actually, if you really want to figure this out, <laughs> You can use what we call one point perspective. I'm not going to really blow your head up with that because it'll, it really will blow up your head. But it's kind of like these angle lines will all go to a single vanishing point. So the angle is as extreme as it takes for these two to meet. Don't worry about that so much. We'll review perspective later. Right, so once I have this and this and this distance, which is about half a box, right, so I know the body ends here. I know the head, I can start to sketch in. Um, I can start to sketch in my hand. But the hand is in front. So see how I'm starting to do that, you can follow along with me. You're having this feeling of that can't possibly be right, good. That means we're on the right track to getting you thinking about this, this correctly. If this seems like it makes sense, then good. You're starting to think like a drawer. I'm not being super careful about the skinniness. Okay. Notice that this hand has like, here's the little, here's the knuckles. Actually, they're more like circles, kind of. Notice that this in itself is kind of the top of the hand. This is a side. Then this is another side. And this is a, is a fourth side. So this is where, when I say side, I mean now things turn. And then they turn again. And then they turn again. Then we can sketch this. This part back here. Notice how short and how much skinnier the arm gets. So here's the, the wrist, and then we can't even really see. This is kind of the, the only part of the arm we can see. 
<clears throat> the shoulder comes up here and over like that. And then we know that the head comes up a little bit higher and down in this oval shape. Right. I also know because I don't go farther than half, really half a box, that when I bring my neck down here, the arm. So everything that's back here behind the hand, which is in front, is smaller. Everything that's not extending, everything that is in front of the hand, in back of the hand is smaller. So go ahead and sketch this out. Yeah, teeny. I like people to sketch this because it really seems unbelievable. My phone keeps wanting to tell me that that beginning drawing is starting. I'm like, I know beginning drawing is starting. I'm in beginning drawing. Okay, there's this. So see, Bettina, all these get pulled. Anytime I aim the camera, my editor pulls them out and includes them. So I'd like to see your guys before we get into this. Guy. Here's the other guy. So intellectually, what you need to know as we start to learn how to draw is that we are going to be using a different system for thinking about objects and subjects. In a way, this part, although this is all connected to one subject, this part we're going to deal differently with than we are with these parts, right? The parts in front. So in a way, we're kind of breaking this apart, kind of like we might a car engine, putting it back together. And because intellectually, your left brain doesn't want to see these as separate, your left brain's going to fight with you on what's actually happening. So the idea Claudia, nice to see you. Hello, stranger. How's Hi, Leah. How's Paris? Well, it's, well, you know, the the lockdowns, you know, we finally got out of the lockdown a couple of weeks ago, so I've just been going out <laughs> for the last few <laughs> weekends. <laughs> I'm happy to be back. <laughs> look at how wide your, uh, look at where your arm goes. It goes, you made your, you made your body twice as wide. Look at it on this side, you'll see. See? Look at what you did there, fix that. This is why I yeah. want you to do it. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Great. So <laughs> notice that even though I explained very clearly, you still did it. <laughs> yep. Know how hard it is, you have to be on yourself to know that, oh, if something's in front, it's much bigger than I think it is. And if something is back, it's much smaller than I think it is. Right here, I was talking, 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 telling you that this was going to happen. So note that the left brain is a real bitch. <laughs> she really, she wants you to be her bitch. She's not interested in the right brain. But you got to tell her to back back off. You got to tell her to you. Nope, you're not helping. What you know is not at all helpful in this situation. Right? It's not helpful. Um. 
you have to learn a new set of rules. There's a new normal. Hi, Tosh, you, hi, Nina. You didn't miss too much. Hi. Gosh, you might recognize this from Wednesday. Never hurts to do it again. All right, so we knew all our good looks see. Jackie, that looks great, by the way. You got it. Absolutely got it. Did it feel weird? Were you like, this can't possibly be right? <laughs> well, I'm, I wasn't, I was trying to turn off the side of my brain that thinks of it as a person and just sort of follow the shapes. Good girl. <laughs> If you had thought of it as a person, would you have bought it more? Yeah, no, it would have just felt weird. Yeah, this is good. So this is great. I love that. Turn off the, turn off the left part of your brain. It's not helpful here. It's wrong all, almost all the time. It's also very judgmental, the left side of the brain. I mean, the left side of the brain is always having to make judgments on a good side, right? The left brain is always trying to define what it is you're looking at and what's happening. You're going to see that as you train up your right side of your brain, you're going to add an entire arsenal of new logical things that are going to totally help you in evaluating the world. And it's very non-judgmental. It's just like, oh, yeah, this is bigger. This is small. Wow. I didn't think that was what was happening. What happened to me is as I started to get more into my right brain, I realized, wow, I really don't know what's happening at all. <laughs> right? I better observe. I better pay more attention. Because this is what's really happening as opposed to what I think is what's happening. What other ideas am I projecting onto this thing by deciding what it is, right? There's a lot. You'd be surprised at how many ideas we have around concepts and ideas and value judgments we have around a thing. So, all right, I'm gonna remove this. I think you guys have it. I guess that means I need another piece of paper. Give me one second. I gotta go get another piece of paper. Okay. All right. You're still gonna use a grid. But I notice that if I don't talk about these concepts, there's still a struggle to figure out where things are. Ultimately, I want you to be able to just do what we did with this drawing, right? Be able to establish the distance and measure everything off it. That's where you get to with drawing. Um, but this is still beginning drawing, so you get the you get the grid crutch. Until you no longer need it. So for those of you who are new, I'm about to show you how to draw a grid on your paper. You're gonna need a ruler, a 12 inch, 30 centimeter ruler. And you're gonna be wanna, wanna be working with a surface that's a space that's no more than a, uh, a I can't remember. American size printer paper. Sandra, A3, A4. A4. A4 which is eight and a half by 11 inches or 21 and a half by 28 centimeters. So you can use a nine by 12, but nothing bigger than that. If, if you have something that's bigger than that, I want you to block off a space using your ruler. That is eight and a half by 11 or 21 and a half by 37. Um, so you guys are going to take, here, let me back up just a little bit so you can see this. You guys are going to take a pen, do this method that I'm about to do with a pencil and a ruler on your blank paper. I'm going to do this with a marker on our source. You're going to be doing the same process just with a pencil and on your blank paper. All right, so a half of uh, half of uh, eight and a half is 4.25. So I'm going to mark the halfway point. And notice I've lined my ruler up with the edge of the paper. I'm very careful to make sure it's not drifting this way. This way. 
right at the edge. Um, don't laugh because I have had, seen a lot of adults be like, what's wrong with my grid? And holding this like, this is a tool just like anything else. And if you're not used to using it, you might, right? So it's easy for things to drift this way or this way. Also, we're used to rushing through things and there's no rushing this process. It doesn't help you. Slowing down is better. Making sure you're getting things right is better. I'm doing the same thing at the top. So that I know now when I draw this line to connect these. My paper is divided exactly in half. Oh, that's very interesting. It's rarely this symmetrical. That the animal is generally, it's not quite symmetrical though. Look, you'll see there's a little bit more nose on this side than there is on this side. So don't try and even that out, which is what your left brain's gonna wanna do. You're gonna do the same thing on the long side. If you're using inches, it's five and a half. If you're using centimeters, it's 14. You can kind of switch back and forth between inches and centimeters as you wish. Inches is really a stupid measurement. I just happen to have this wooden, this wooden ruler is the only one that I haven't painted all over and all it has is inches on it. Um, so I need to get new rulers. So then you're dividing this in half and then you're going to divide each half in half. You're going to have to figure this out on your own. What's half of the centimeter number? I can tell you that half of the inches number is 2.2 here. And then once again, very carefully, I'm just going to line this up, 2.2 here. So I'm finding the halfway point of each half. To be precise. You can rise up. And as you can imagine, we're gonna do the same thing on the long side. It, what is that noise? It's fantastic. Is that coming from you, Sam? Oh, it's the. I'm sorry about it. It's a cat bird. He's and hilarious. He's, he's staking claim to staking claim to my garden. So apparently that's why we make this noise. That's but awesome. I also give him cherries every day, and he's the most demanding creature. <laughs> <laughs> I think he has a mate as well. Uh, I don't dare give him cherries now because the cats are loose, so I don't want him to right. risk his life. But it's all day long making a racket. Now there's two of them. If it drives you insane, I'll go and mute. Oh, no, I actually am finding it very rhythmic. I was just wondering what it was. Oh, good. Awesome. Well, I noticed lately that my crow that comes and wants to be fed is now starting to make barking noises. Uh, so I was wondering, I was thinking about your crow actually, because I think now I'm feeding a chipmunk and two cat birds. And I was wondering how your crow asks for food. He, he will, if nobody's paying attention to him, he kind of goes, he clears his throat like, <laughs> 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 it's really funny. Ahem. <laughs> My guy is much more vocal. Ahem. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit more refined. I actually have a hilarious story to tell you about squirrels. I'll tell you guys when we get into the drawing. Okay, so then you should have a grid on your blank paper with a pencil that looks like this. So those of you who are ready here, I'll give you the first lines. As usual, we're gonna start with the outside shape. This is gonna be fairly simple. Notice I'm doing no inside lines. Only outside lines. Can go ahead and get set up with that and then we'll we'll go back into this structure that's happening here uh, yes maybe actually i'll tell you this now let i'll catch up with you and then i heard the, anyway i got a. it's a funny story about squirrels let's put it that way uh bettina yeah that looks good good um so here is is our guy for you. Yeah, so now all of these, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to take this away. It's like, it's kind of working around the computer arm. That's the trick. There we go. 
there's step one for you. And I have another copy, so when I start drawing all over, we need to see more detail. We will catch up. I noticed new students when you're starting out want to like kind of, are kind of champing at the bit to go fast. But I find one of the things that's really, and I am too, I'm like that too, I totally get it. But one of the things that's really nice about this process of drawing a grid is that it starts to slow you down. You know what I mean? Because everything takes, I, what I'm trying to teach you beyond uh, the tricks and techniques of, of the right brain is that there's a rhythm and a time that it takes to do everything. I noticed a lot of my beginning students try to rush through the beginning shapes. And, uh, but doing that always means they gotta go back, right? So as you start to do more of this, the idea of this is to kind of soothe your mind, slow you down, appreciate how long it takes to do what. If you take a figure drawing class with me, which I hope you will someday, um, you'll, uh, you'll see that I require, that it requires you to, here, hold on, there we go, oops, hey, no, that's not what I wanted to do, okay, sorry, um, I don't know what's going on here. Oh, I see, go away. Um, You'll see, my train of thought. you'll see that I show you how to draw a figure in one minute. And then I show you how to take longer to draw a figure. And one of the things I hope that everybody gets out of this is that the first two hours, like there's things you do when you have a minute and there's things you do when you've got an hour, you know, 20 minutes. And there's things you do when you have an hour and uh, that everything has a kind of pacing and a rhythm that we need to stay in tune with. I like to give myself little dots. To me as I'm starting out. And in things, situations like this, I often like to get the negative space. Why do we call this negative space? Anyone? Why do we call this negative space, this space in here? The negative space. space? What's that? It's not negative space. <laughs> it is negative space. Why do I call it negative space? Because it's the reverse of the positive space of the... Yeah, yeah, of the object, right? The object. So the subject is space, taking up space, and the space between the subject is taking up space, right? Both of those things are happening. And when you're in a drawing, they're equally important. If you don't have the negative space right, your subject isn't going to look right. Once again, not how we're used to thinking, right? We're used to thinking that we should ignore what is not the subject. But I'm here to tell you, no, no, no. <laughs> Just like Amy Winehouse. So anyway, I often find that trying to recreate this space helps me. In fact, I can see I don't have it skinny enough here. Yep, there we go. There we go. That's better. I think 
can see that actually recreating the negative space is easier than trying to place this in space. So if I think of this like a little jigsaw puzzle piece, right? I got to get this in before I can put that in. Don't you love the right brain? It turns you all upside down. Speaking of turning upside down, I'm sure we will at some point go upside down. Not us personally, but our drawings. Once again, I think this is a great example of a negative space where negative space can be helpful. So if I recreate this shape, it's kind of down here and it goes over, over and down. Uh, yep, too far. Exactly halfway. Okay, so you can come right here in the middle. Right. Notice that this kind of this line kind of rides along the edge. Comes all the way up on the edge here, about halfway. <laughs> I feel like <coughs> really this class should be called Let the Right Brain Amaze You. <laughs> Let it amaze you. Let it astound you with its tricks. Okay. And then so I'll t I'd like to see these, this step here, I'll, show, I'll send mine. I'll share yours if you share mine. Oh. And I can't quite get my phone in front of my camera. I think you have this guy in a little farther, or there's a little bit more of a diagonal down here. I'm just nitpicking. This basically looks good to me. Wait, where? Oh, sorry. I was pointing at something that's not visible on the camera. Here, let me try that again. <laughs> um, take a look at the shape you've got here. You're a little bit wide and fat here. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So if this kind of comes at an angle, then it's like really two straight lines, even angle lines, right? Yep. Yep. I mean, it's a nuance, right? Let's see. Yeah, Jackie, I tell you the same thing. I think you're going in. Uh, I like. Uh, I think you're a little bit too far to the left, just a titch, not really a lot, just a, a titch. Yeah. Really look at that shape. Because this is important, right? This is the shape of the jaw. Yep. Good job, you guys. So my grid just turned out a little bit differently. So I'm following my grid, even though it seems to be shifted a little. What do you mean your grid turned out differently? I mean, when I drew the lines on my animal. Uh-huh. Oh, lines, you printed they... it differently. Yes, you printed it differently because you have, yes, yes, yes. Because you've got a slightly different crop that's fine yep that totally works just just send me a picture of your grid Bettina when you send it in oh okay yeah just so I can see it as long as I put them next to each other so I can see them next to each other okay all right and then this next shape 
Yeah, so Nina, yours is a little too skinny. Look at this shape, right? And look at what you've done. You've done something that's more like this. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Perfect, Bettina. Oh yeah, so your little negative space down here is much smaller. Right. Nice work. Great. Yep. It works. So you can see when Bettina printed hers out, it, it printed with a slightly different crop. So yeah, as long as you're doing that, don't follow me. Like follow what the follow what the grid says. All right. And then and don't worry, I have another copy of this guy. We're going to draw that little box in. Okay. We're going to draw this box in. Because I want you to really see how high up this is. So this box comes really at the halfway point here. Almost down to the bottom here. And really, it comes to the edge of the chin here and to here. And then literally, it just goes, right? We're just going to draw our box. It's more like a rectangle than a triangle. So, well, I think my box is a little lower too. Yeah, yeah. So just do just locate where look at where the top is, Bettina, which is okay. right here. It's where the I put the the box at the top of the nose, which is okay. like doing the top of the front part of the fist, right? Okay. So that's the idea. So just put your box where that needs to be. And then this is where you can really see that the nose is not as big on this size as this size. Because you'll see that this side, there's a little bit, it's not exactly dividing in half. There's a little bit less nose, right? See, there's like a little bit more box on this side of the line than this, and that will reflect in how you divide out the nose as well. Maybe this comes out a little bit wider. Oh, hi, Paul. Nice to see you. It's funny, I can only see a few of you up here, so I don't see who jumps in until later. Um, okay, so once we've got this shape, right, then we can start sketching in. So here's the front. Here's the outside shape of the nose. Mouth is kind of a shape like this, and you'll see that what I'm doing is kind of outlining the darker shapes in the nose and the mouth. Now, if we hadn't had this grid. I would have you define the shape of this box and then use this box to figure out how wide, how far up and down to put everything. <clears throat> so that's why it's important for you to know it's there. Eventually, that's where we're going. <laughs> Eventually, I'm probably going to have to add an intermediate drawing in and a beginning drawing so that we don't wallop the new beginning drawing people who will inevitably join with more of this, but if you're wanting to go, you know, bigger. It's 
funny. I'm actually noticing that my computer is about six feet away from me, about four feet away from me. So I'm looking at my computer to make sure I got my drawing right. Standing here where I'm really close to it, it's harder for me to see. But if I turn my head and I can look at the computer projected. So I would recommend you do that as well. Notice that these lines, once again, these lines will come together. They'll meet at a point. And that's how you kind of check how extreme to make the angles. But yes, go ahead and do it. All right, so now what we're working this, you guys want to hear a really funny squirrel story? Yes. All right, so I uh, don't have a color printer and I rent my house out as a vacation rental. So I have no access to my mailbox usually. And uh, I often need things done. So there's a little coffee shop that's like four blocks from my house that I where I get my mail and I get all my copies made and if I need books or signs or prints or anything I go to them. So they're kind of like my office. Anyway, there's this, this nice couple that runs it, young couple. And about a year ago, one of them came in with a bunch of scratches on her. And I was like, what is that? And she said, you promise you won't tell anyone? And she showed me video of this squirrel, baby squirrel that uh, had broken its leg, they had found it on the ground, and they had adopted it. Right? Oh. Baby squirrel. They named the baby squirrel monster. Mo it's been about a year. Monster lives with them. Now baby squirrel monster lives with them, right, in their house. And so uh, it would be, but we always had to be really quiet about it because technically you're not supposed to adopt wildlife. Adopt wildlife, right? Like you're totally not. So the other day I get a phone call from her and she says, Lee, will you come in and talk to me about something? I'm like, what, what she want to talk about? I come in and she goes, well, yeah, I didn't want to leave a message on the phone, but one of my friends found a baby squirrel and I wondered if you wanted to adopt it. And first, I, and, I, and I was like, no, okay, I can't. But then I was like, what do you mean one of your friends? And, she, and then her husband looked at her and said, oh no, honey, um, there's a few squirrel families just down the street from here. One of them will take it. I'm like, squirrel families? She said, there's an entire underground network of people who keep squirrels. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and there is like a vet in Corvallis, Oregon, which is like a like three hour drive from here. And the vet will meet you at midnight to take care of your like squirrel. And there's a whole network of people who are adopting out squirrels. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I suppose I was like squirrel family. One, I, no, I'm not going to do that. But B, isn't that? I've seen some videos of people who have squirrels, who have adopted squirrels at home, and they a whole seem to make nice, but it's a they whole adapt well. And 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 furthermore, in the Northwest. There is one type of squirrel is considered native and the other is invasive. There's a red squirrel that is invasive. So not only if you find an injured red squirrel, no vet will take it because you're not supposed to help an invasive species, right? If no. it's a gray squirrel, so beyond that, so, but, but you know, the squirrel network doesn't care. They're like, anyway, they're like, they, so there are squirrel families, there's websites, there are veterinarians that will secretly take care of your squirrel. Out of this Very cool. Know, isn't that funny? Yeah, I'm not using a grid. I'll send it to you. Okay, I hope you were measuring from the mouth. I'm measuring with a caliper, I'm measuring everything. And I tried to, Put the rest of the years in. Okay. Hold on. I'm gonna look and see. Uh, yeah, looks pretty good here. I feel he's a little wide here, but let me check it. So you'll notice that Sandra's drawing. So for me to check Sandra's drawing. I need to check my proportions here. So I'm using this box here, which I've established to measure. And I can see that the distance between the eyes is really the top, the height of the box. So now let's see if Sandra's. 
Uh, yeah, you're a little bit too, scoot this one in just a little bit to the right. Make it wide, okay. Make it a little narrower, bring it a little bit into the right. Thank you. But you are right, he's tilting his head, so one eye is a little bit lower. You're yeah, surprised, I noticed that with ears, uh, because yeah, one ear is much yeah, good. lower. Good, Sandra, that looks great to me. Thank you. Uh, I think his neck is a little too wide. So bring in his neck a little bit to the left on this side too. Okay. There, it kind of goes down. On this side, it goes straight down, but on this side, it's like straight and then out. So he's a little bit skinnier. Okay. Also, if you're gonna make his eyes um, tilted, you also need to tilt his neck a little bit. Right, Your, his nostrils look kind of straight up, like straight across to me. Uh, I didn't tilt. I didn't tilt the nostrils. They're not as tilted as the eyes. They are. But, but they are tilted a little bit here. Yeah. They are still yeah, tilted. tilted. You will notice. You guys will notice that little tiny, a centimeter of difference is going to read mm -hmm. like the difference between what something looks like and what it doesn't look like. And uh, it would look very weird if you did a picture with tilted eyes and ears and not the nostrils straight. Right. I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell why it looked weird, but it would look weird. Right. Well, you know, it's like a lot of our drawings in general. Like, we don't know that we're making this mistake. I'm checking here to see that basically halfway up my, uh, I gotta bring this down. Well, wait a minute. We might be able to go up to minus classes. One is here. I couldn't get up. I was too tired. And nostril two. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is he still not driving you crazy? No, it's becoming. It's funny. Animals are funny. This has never happened before. I mean, not like this. You fed the monster, Sandra. I know. I've already fed him. He loves cherries. Monster. really easy to make the mouth too large. So one of the things I like to do is mark kind of the bottom and the top here. And I'm going to do this in pieces. I'm not going to try and draw that whole curve line. I'm going to draw it in sort of straight lines. There we go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I can adjust it later. And then, yeah, you'll notice if you go back up into eyes now. Here, let me. Right, now we can kind of get these inner shapes. these kind of medium picks. The goat to paint me. Notice as you start to get more into drawing how easy it is to exaggerate the sizes of some things and not enough and not make big enough the sizes of other things. It depends on what you're kind of 
left brain assesses is important. So a great example of this on humans is ears and eyes. So ears are, and I'm gonna just pop in here so you can see this for yourself. Um, ears, if you look at like my ears, ears are huge. They kind of come from, sorry, it's a little bit dark in here. Uh, here we go, here, this side, this side. All right, the ear kind of comes from, it's lined up with the eye right? And it ends here, like kind of below the nose. Ears are huge, but we don't look at the ears, so we tend to make them too small. Eyes are really small, and they're located about halfway down our face. But because we look at the eyes, we tend to make them bigger and move them up the face, give them more importance, right? So we kind of look in and evaluate, and, and we're picking up information from the eyes and facial expressions. So we fo what we focus on, we make bigger, and what we don't pay attention to, we make smaller. Um, so those are the things that you kind of have to completely turn around as you're beginning to um, learn to draw. I did it, Claudia, you missed this. <laughs> I'm just teasing. We missed you though. The only reason Diana isn't here is that she has a new puppy and she's um, um, she's taking him to puppy training school. Oh, Sunny. Did you hear about Did Charlie? You heard about Charlie? Yes. Yeah. I saw, I met Sunny. I, I, um, I just said hi in, at Diana's, you know, free drawing class or, you know, the open studio last week. Oh, good. So, yeah. you, you in Los Angeles? I know you met online. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, just a Zoom call. I was like, what? You're in town and you didn't drop by? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, There we go. Now he's starting to come out. If, if you're finding these confusing, maybe at this point it'll be good. Let's go upside down. Turn your drawing upside down. Turn your source upside down. Let's work upside down for a while. It helps. I removed my. Anybody know why I'm doing this? Why are we? Why am I? Why are we? Why are we working upside down? Because it unplugs the left brain. Yeah, it really does more than anything else. Gosh, looks good. Paul, you do not have the nose in the right place. I think it's because your box is not in the right place. Let's. Yeah, you just made your box too wide, hon. Look at where the box actually is in relation to these two squares in the middle. Or two rectangles in the middle. It's too far. Well, turn it upside down, but you can see how well it fits the upside down test. I feel like there's a little reshaping that needs to be done here but it'll be easier to see it upside down. Good job, by the way, you guys, good job. You know me. I like to just go in and fix. You really see the kind of way things are tilted when you look at this upside down. It's easier to see it. All right, and then you can kind of get in these dark shapes. Where 
where's Olga this week? Is she on vacation or something? Has anybody, I don't know. Has anybody seen her? She might be working, so I don't know where she has to uh, work. Oh, right, I bet she's working. Yeah, I was totally able to correct. And then, of course, once you get the shapes in, it becomes a matter of the darks and the lights, right? So as a review, if one is the lightest value and five is the darkest value, right? This is our light, this is our dark. Two, three, and four are mid-tones. They're gradually getting darker. And you can see a difference between them, right? I can see the difference between one and two two and three, three and four, four and five. There should be a difference that's distinct enough that if you put them next to each other, you can see them. And in fact, even if that's not what's happening on the drawing, you can do what they call pushing that. You can push that contrast. You can make it a little bit more dramatic. So you'll see that a lot of these areas, so I'm kind of coming in here. I like to go in and add my darks first. Those that means you get to do that crazy blocky pupil. Look at how just adding that. Actually, and it's adding the pupil where I get, oops, I made it way too wide. I made this eye way too wide on one side. So don't be shy to correct. And at this point, so that that numbs through. Nothing else is like really, really dark. I would really like to do some charcoal lessons coming up in a couple of weeks. So I would hope that everybody would get the charcoal materials. Notice how I'm kind of going in and getting the darks first, and then I will go back and start working the edges. So if this is like a and this is a five, it becomes a two. And remember what I, what did we say last week about how to deal with shading as in fur? Are you drawing every piece of fur? No, right? You're not drawing every piece of fur. Where you're working on, just like with the hummingbird and feathers, where you're working on detail is where a lighter edge of fur meets a darker edge of fur. So for example, up here, where this darker edge kind of gets gradually lighter, I'm creating a kind of furry, ragged edge, dark going into the lighter edge. Right? I'm paying attention to that. Here, it's a little bit darker. Here, it's like super dark. Here it's like a four, then this is a three. And then there's a transition from three to two. So instead of drawing every piece of fur, I'm kind of working on where we go from dark to light. Down here, it's kind of darker. Here it's darker. And then we get these lighter bits coming in. This is what made me think of charcoal. I was like, this would be such an amazing piece to do in charcoal. 
there's a kind of light, there's a kind of light fur underneath his mouth here, and then it gets gradually darker. So maybe the best way to handle this is to darken everything, and then, then, and then, and then, this is darker than that. So there's, you can see little bits of fur. And then take your eraser, and erase into the dark. You have a light area that has a little bit of a red leaf. And you can kind of come back in. But you can see some of these dark furs kind of coming into that light area, but it's mostly light. So you can kind of experiment with ways. How do I make that? Oh, I see a transition happening. Up down here, where I'm working right now, there's a transition happening. And this is more of a whiskers thing, so it's kind of darker in places. Maybe I go a little bit dark like this. Touch dark. And then take my eraser. Really use a skin. I could use a mop, whatever those things are, the zero eraser. I just don't have it. Let's see. Yeah, Bettina, that looks great. I think. Though, uh, Bettina, his nostrils are a little bit wider apart. Wider? Yeah, look at, look at, there's a space that's about nostril size between each nostril. You have them kind of right next to each other with no space in between. We'll go later, meeting. We're going to go, but not now, okay? I promise. Just chill out for mommy. I'll be, we'll go later in the afternoon. Anyways, as you're getting darker, look at your, I want you to, Bettina, I want you to turn your piece upside down so you can really see. I want everybody working upside down so that you can really, so turn your piece upside down and turn your own so you can, you can see those shapes more clearly. I'm kind of going darker around the edge of some of my, on the mouth where the lights are coming in. I'm pulling in an eraser and then kind of drawing a little contour line around it. That's a little bit darker. So there's this feeling of transition. And same here. We'll, we'll want to get basically rid of all these blocky pieces, right? and start to smooth out those transitions. See that although this isn't a four, it's definitely like a five, it's definitely like a four. This outer shape around the mouth. I'm trying to get that in. Good on the nostrils, Tosh. Good, 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 good. I feel like. Uh, 
Um, I feel like you've got this piece a little too wide, Tosh. It's going kind of out like this on this side. Okay. I cut that in a little bit. Look how straight up and down this shape is. It's that curve and it's the same on this side. You've kind of got more of, you've just exaggerated the curve a little bit more. It's way more straight up and down than it looks like. There's a slight curve here. Everything else is kind of straight. Other than that, that looks great. Notice that it's much darker for my goat, uh, the goat underneath the neck. So whatever color I lay down, it has to be whatever value I lay down, excuse me, it has to be much darker than what's here. And my lightener darken. Oops. It's very often that like things will uh, like dark, not always true, but it is often true that like the light things come forward and the dark helps things to recede. It doesn't mean that everything gets darker as it goes back, but you'll often see a juxtaposition like that when you're looking at a light area like the face that's coming forward and the rest of it is behind. It'll be kind of a darker, dark thing. So things as they, as they move back kind of and recede, often there's a value shift. And often it's a dark one, not always, but often. We should kind of lose our our blocks, our sort of our, our made up, you know, sketch that we did here. Keep us kind of on track as we start to. There's these dark edges. Notice around the eyes, it's darker. Ignoring those ear bands. See how that works? I'm kind of moving. I'm not staying in one area too long, too. That's a recipe for losing your freaking mind. <laughs> so if you're working an area and you're like, I just don't know what to do next, move around. Work your biggest areas first. Notice that the bottom of this horn is darker than the top. What is that sound? That's the cat. That's you tell them, Sandra. It's a cat bird in my garden. I can um, I can go mute if it drives you insane. It's driving me insane. Um, I I think it's just claiming. I don't, I've read about why they make such a racket. I don't know. I didn't know whether it was looking for mate or the bunny they do. Have you know, it wants cherries, Sandra. Sorry? <laughs> it wants cherries. <laughs> I just gave him some. He wants more cherries. He knows. Just gave him three cherries. Oh, the shot sucker when he sees them.
He even screams while he's eating the cherries. <laughs> Maybe he is mating. Maybe he is mating then. That and there is happen. now, at the beginning, he was alone. Now there's another one around. So oh, yeah. he was like, he's like, all my friends, come to where the sucker is. No, no, apparently they, it's, they make that noise so that others don't the come. One, the other one, but, the other one won't happen, except for a pretty girl. Exactly. So maybe, I hope I don't make a nest in the garden. I'm going insane. He is really loud. I think it will end badly. I keep telling the cats they're part of family now, but I don't know. Do, shall I go on mute? Hey. I'll go on mute.
that needs some narrowing. By getting kind of lighter, not exactly fully light, but lighter than light outside. Those of you who are forgetting what this originally looked like because I've covered up all of this stuff. Let me just put another picture of Rob. Not bad, Nina, coming along. Nice. Jackie, nice. I like the, the mark making that starts to happen here. Turn it upside down. So it's still gonna sit down this. Tina, you know Janet because of the church. Yes. You guys are church buddies. Mm -hmm. Nice. How's the church doing? Oh, well, we're doing something very exciting. We just bought a big new property. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's a big deal. So, And then we have to decide how to build on it, whether to build on it. Um, yeah, we were deep into maybe expanding where we our building is. Um, and all of a sudden we've bought a different property, which we might end up selling if we don't decide to expand on it. So it's pretty intense. One, two. Janet's on the board, so she gets to have a front row seat to that intensity. Yes, I know. She's been looking tired lately. <laughs> and I'm kind of amazed because to get the kind of will to make that happen, I mean, you guys kind of have to, there has to be a lot of agreement, right? Like people have to be on the same page. I just imagine that's tough, tough to do. Not only agreement, but agreement with your pocketbook. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to close the old location or turn it into a shelter or something? Um, yeah, the idea is to keep it open and use it for different purposes. Um, yeah, if we can, if we can raise the funds to, to, to shift to the other location, that's the plan. Wow. Getting any property in New Jersey must, must just be so huge. It's a big deal. And then building and everybody's panicking because of the price of lumber right now, but right, it, it'll be years before we build. All the you know, all the senior citizens are saying this. This isn't happening in my lifetime. Um, <laughs> so. so we have friends. I have a couple of neighbors who own lumber companies. They're like the retail outlets, not the mills. And they said uh, they're complete. They're it's already plummeting. The prices are already dropping. It's dropping. Yeah, it was oh, tempting. And the reason they know this is that they've gotten totally screwed because they were forced to buy wholesale at the top of the market and now the market's dropping. So they said the retail, the middleman is really getting squeezed out in this equation. Oh, 
Oh, you can't hear me? Now we can. Okay. So we you we, we lost you in mid sentence. Oh, that's so weird. Um, you were saying that your friends know that uh, they got the. Oh yeah yeah yeah. So I have these uh, I have these neighbors who own. Anyway, it's it's the people who own the uh, the, the the lumber the sort of retail you know a, a lumber yard. Not like a mill where you're making it. The people in the mills made money. The lumber mills. So you have a lumber you... yard. Most were forced to to restock at very high prices, and now the now the value of those are plummeting. So they're going to have to sell them for less than what they paid for them. So why did the prices go so high? Be, well, um, because uh, lumber mill lumber is requires a lot of labor. Um, it requires a supply chain. chain. Uh, so A, there weren't enough people who were able to staff the lumber mill during the high points of quarantine. Uh, trucking was not as like, you know, had to be as available and trucking was uh, hurt by, um, like all along the way, the supply chain, chain right. was hampered by, by COVID. So I guess it just seems to have been hurt more than some other things, you know? Well, I think... Lumber had, according to my neighbors, lumber had been undervalued for a long time. Oh, so right. Paid a lot less for it, like coffee. You know, you pay a lot less for it than you should, considering how much work. So it was like a correction. It corrected really far in one direction. Now it's kind of settling. What did he say? He said something like, yeah, a piece of plywood, a giant a plywood sheet shouldn't cost you, you know, $5. But it should, you know, it shouldn't cost you twenty dollars. But it, it also shouldn't cost one hundred and fifty dollars. It should cost, you know, like probably fifty or sixty dollars. So I think it's, it's just a correction that you know, it benefited the lumber pe mill people and probably people who work in the mills, but it did not benefit the mom and pop, um, mm -hmm. shop, which which are the people that I know. Oh yeah, that's coming along. Nice, Sandra. Good job. I think we'll see a lot of things that are like this, right? For me, an art for artists that were online, business was tremendous last year. It's tremendous. And actually, we saw that with art supplies, you know, very much supplies during the pandemic. Finished paintings. A lot of people bought finished paintings um, and artwork, bought artwork for their houses. So definitely, but you had to be online. If you were an artist that sells at art fairs, which are there are a lot of around here, sort of craft fair stuff, then you lost money. But if you were an artist that was online, then you made money. And if you took advantage of sort of online things, like my studio partner and I had a, a couple of um, uh, well-timed, I'd say, live Zoom parties where we released a bunch of stuff to a group of people at the same time. And, you know, a group of people who've been pent up and not able to go out to dinner and not be able to go to travel. Saving money. To like, who spent everything, you know, but that didn't, anyway, it was a couple of really great I remember Janet saying, Janet was there. She was like, I couldn't stop myself. You Did you understand the psychology? And I'm like, oh yeah, we did. I always understand the psychology of what you're doing when you're selling. That's a lot of it. Um, but it didn't keep working, right? Like I, we could do it like twice and then it stopped being as effective. People got bored with that. So now you have to kind of think about what is it people wanting, what are wanting now, right? B wants to be outside because she just moved to her new neighborhood and her new city. So she's outside, right? So people want to get out. Claudia wants to be outside. We all want to be outside, right? Because you've been stuck inside. So you, your art class, if my art, if you're going to keep coming to art class, that has to kind of follow with you. Um, if you're going to be selling art, you need to be where that, where those, you know, you just sort of follow where people go. It's exhausting. 
<laughs> yeah, people are going to want to travel now. Completely, I'll be dead honest with you. It's completely exhausting. But I mean, it, it works, but it's exhausting. Uh, by the way, some good news. Jessica told me that she wants to do another lecture series. She hasn't told me on what. Oh, Leah, I'm going to go to an art. Uh, actually, it's not an opening. It's a closing today. A closing. Good. Where? It's uh, it's it's on. It's not. It's a weird subject. It's called. Let's see. Differential ontology. Oh, that does sound interesting. Yeah, they're gonna have lectures and everything. That sounds great. Yeah, right. I know that if you have an opening, it's more of like a uh, celebratory. When they shut it down, it's more like lectures and. Right. Yeah. yeah. What can you show online? Blah blah blah. Yeah. Yeah, I had my first opening in a year and a half a month ago, and it was great. It was really fun. But then sell a lot. That's very often the case in Portland openings. Um, which is kind of why I was like, I don't really miss these that much. It's a lot of work for not very much reward. Did but you in past, would you sell more? No, it's very up in Portland. The market is really up or down. Uh, there's not the money here directed toward. I mean, there's money here, but it's not. <laughs> People going to art shows. So it's been hard to try to track where actually people are spending money and how to reach them and uh, if people. Um, yeah, no, it's really up or down. What's weird in Portland is that I'm as likely to sell at a coffee shop as I am at a gallery opening. You know, whether it's where it's ever respected. Gallery. In fact, I'm, I'm much more likely, to, which is weird. I remember I first, I ignored coffee shops when I first got here because I was like, I'm beyond coffee shops. And then I realized if I want to sell them, we we'll got some up in coffee shops. Third. And then I realized that was when I really realized I had to get online because um, there's no way. That the port that I can see. Oh, mine, it just scared me. I didn't know what he was doing. Coffee shop. Like, who's coming around the front? I didn't know what was going on. I'm like, who's coming to the front of the door? Go on, Leah. Yeah. Anyway, it's an ever changing target, ever shifting target. You never know. It's a bit, yeah, that's a real problem with art, isn't it? It's very difficult. To it's um the marketing you know i'm i'm fortunate in that i actually do it in so even though it's tiring i like it i get a great set of satisfaction in somebody buying a painting like it's really a great feeling um particularly if it's something it doesn't matter anymore now i'm like i know you i don't know you it doesn't really matter just yes could change yes because the more i do this the more you know the more the more i can support myself so I kind of enjoy the different ways. I spend a lot of time strategizing with my friends that are uh, artists who are also market minded and we share our ideas. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. Uh, if you do it on Instagram, there's a whole thing that's going on there. If you do it on, uh, it's a very specific way. Um, but the Instagram people look really tired is what I notice. If you're an Instagram, if you do well on Instagram, you're you're kind of locked into Instagram. I have really? kind of a minimal presence on Instagram. I mean, it grows, I'm growing it, but slowly, because I don't want that kind of. Why are you then locked on Instagram? Is because it because of post, Because you have to post all the time, constantly. Oh. You're constantly having to post. And you have to post, it's soft marketing. They call it pink marketing. Soft marketing. You can't say, here's my painting for sale. People don't buy that. <laughs> you have to post something with a little thing and a blah, 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 and a video and a reel and music and 
then people might want to buy it, but like you have to find the way to hook their attention. It's all about entertainment. It's bread and circuses. So just like, and anybody who's in retail now will tell you that it's about entertaining the customers. You have to create a kind of experience for them on Instagram and then keep doing that over and over and over again. So the oh. Instagram people, the people I know who do well on Instagram are just like constantly churning. Maybe you know, new stuff, new ways of talking about things. It's interesting because it, that's what strikes me what happens with um, Patreon. I mean, there's some people I think who do amazingly well on Patreon, but it's, it's, it's a, a lot of work. It's a thing. It's a thing. Beatrix looking good. Uh, B, you've got, you've kind of forgotten that there's a little extra dark bit easier to see on the part that I haven't scribbled here. Hold on, I'll show it to you. Take a look at the guy that I sent that doesn't have marks. Yeah, Patreon is a whole thing. I've been thinking about doing that with the school, but it's really exhausting. So it is. I see the guy, like there's a guy called uh, Jason Morgan. He's an animal uh, painter mm -hmm. and he uses pastels, but he, I only watch him a little bit because he doesn't use real pastels. He uses pencils. Yeah. He's amazingly good. I mean, he's so right. good that you basically can't get a commission from him anymore. Right. Um, exactly. Which is how you do it. But yeah, he has to work. And he's got a, a wonderful style of uh, doing videos, but it's like, must, it's a full-time job. I mean, well, yeah. However, yeah. he's got so many patrons, I reckon he doesn't have to do anything else. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a really full-time job. Um, B, did you see this, this space here? Don't forget about or, like near the mouth. Yeah, see? Okay. Yeah. 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 So expand yeah. that outward. Yours, your face is a little bit narrow. So you can actually expand it out by adding dark on the edge. Same here too. Thank yeah, you. I've, I've toyed with it quite a lot. I spent a lot of time thinking about it as, as my business grows. And you know, one of the reasons I made a very intentional decision to grow this teaching business because uh, I really enjoy it. Oh, Jackie, there you go. He's coming along. I feel Jackie like his eyes a little bit too small. Yeah. So make the eyes bigger. Yeah. And note that there is a shift. There are like two shifts happening here. There's like this four here, and then there's a three here. Uh -huh. Right? Yep. Yep. So that's going to be a little bit more here. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to put him up now. I think you guys are beyond the basic drawing, and now you need to really focus on the details. Um, yeah, so it's been an interesting question as to how to just like, I, I, I pay attention to what everybody's doing, and um, I have thoughts that, you know, I can see the sort of benefits and the cost of Patreon is an interesting one, but it's a whole thing. And I wonder how much they take from you, you know, probably quite a bit. Uh, you know, I think it's mostly, mostly people are pretty grateful for it, but it's just like anything. You're entertaining people, so you're required. Yeah, and I see some people are full of, they say they apologize because they've been sick or something's happened, you know, their father died, so they haven't done any videos. And can you imagine if you have people are giving money every month and suddenly thinking like, whoa, what am I paying for? Right. Well, Cyrus, that looks great. Jackie. He looks great. Paul's coming along. Sandra looking great. These are all looking great, you guys. By the way, how much time? Don't look at the clock. How much time do you think has gone by? Much. The whole time. Pretty much. We've got 15 minutes left. That's crazy, isn't it? We always run out of time. It's almost too short, particularly for the painting. Yeah, I have to go. I'm going out. Ah, oh, enjoy. <laughs> good. Have fun. Thank you. I will. To see have you. a good day. Bye. Bye. Yeah, I can tell I'm absorbed because I have a glass of water here that I, I haven't been drinking. Just I haven't even started on my coffee. No. Right. Right. So it's weird how uh, time just stop, stops when you're here. I mean, it doesn't stop, but you feel suspended in present moment. 
Oh, Bettina, that's looking good. Tosh, good, good, you guys. Nina, nice. He's wonderful. <laughs> yes, I don't expect that you're going to be able. My classes in person were always three hours. Just so that you know that, I only have one. Uh, my Sunday class online is here is three hours. I teach them. Um, we're, we're right now, it's a it's an oil a slash acrylic painting atelier. Right now we're doing painting the figure, drawing and painting the figure, and we're gonna start a new figure on Sunday. So it'd be a great time to jump in if you wanted to. But most of my classes uh, in person are three hours because I feel like actually that's how much time it takes to do a drawing like this satisfactorily. Yes. But I don't think being online for three hours is helpful. So most of these drawings and paintings are designed to get you started. Let me help you. Uh, I can continue to help you using the WhatsApp thread so that you you notice no one's really asked a question in about an hour. <laughs> no, it's you're scrambling. I'm uh, scrambling. Right? But you know what you need to do, right? Like you might be you're not stuck. The idea of what I'm trying to do is get you a process so that you can easily move forward. And I know that I've got you in there when you stop asking questions, right? When everybody's just working, it's great. I mean, it doesn't mean there aren't more questions to ask. It just means that you know what you're, you know, you're working around busily problem something, problem solving. I know you'll come to me if you have a specific problem, in general, this process is designed so that you can continue on on your own. And of course, there's also always the um, the YouTube channel. Anyway, we got about 15 minutes left, so. Thank <laughs> you. 
Leah. Yes. What are those on his upside down? Yeah. On the left ear, what are those loop looking things? They look like rings. I think they're they have a clips because it's a form of hands. They're what? The clips. That's what formable what they, humans do to what do they form? Labels. They identify which herd he belongs to, who he belongs oh. to. Oh. Oh. Draw them because I think they're kind of I think that's kind Thank of you. <laughs> But it's like, I'm like, those are earrings. <laughs> They're goat earrings. He's a punk rocker, Hostars. <laughs> why do they have earrings? <laughs> Gold loops or something. I'm like, what are those loops? On? I love it. Uh, I refuse to paint those. I mean, what really bothers me is that basically means he might be somebody's meal sometime, you know? Exactly. Or maybe not, maybe it's just an identifier. Or maybe it's just the milk or the cheese if he's lucky, if he's lucky. But that's a boy, isn't it? Talking for cheese. I think so. I don't know. So maybe it's for mating with some luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's Is it a goat or an elk? An elk. It's a goat. Definitely elk. No, not an elk. Elks have it's a goat, not an elk. Yeah, oaks have uh, uh, oaks have big horns. Oh. Also, you wouldn't get that close to an elk. Elks be crazy. <laughs> elks will freaking run you down. <laughs> they're yeah, they're huge. big. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have to shoot them if they get pretty. Big. They're big and wild, and and very strong. Have you have you tasted elk meat? No. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people. Um, uh, a lot of people. I mean, there's a ton of elk here, so a lot of people hunted here. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It's kind of gamey. It's it's good. They have there's this. It actually won a Michelin star. There was this. Uh, it's like a game. Uh, so like tucked away in the in the uh, in the Malibu canyons, they have this. It's like this. Uh, it's called the Saddle Peak, and they serve elk, venison, buffalo. Um, it's actually pretty good. I have I, to drop off. Bye. I, well, James, so. Bye. Great work, B. We'll see you next week. Oh, my beast is back. So Leo, you would never draw whiskers on? Oh, sure, you can. I just got bored with it. I mean, I got bored. Uh, you want to use your, I, you want to use your eraser for that, right? Because the whiskers are mostly white. Right, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, Paul, looking great. Dina, Nina, your goat has an attitude. <laughs> oh, okay. That's what happens when I draw upside down. I have no idea what I'm doing. It looks happy. No, it doesn't look happy. Okay. <laughs> he just has a slight, yes, he's got an attitude. Um, his eyes are bigger than you have them. So just look at the shapes. I know the point, the point is, Nina, you're the most left-brained person I think I've ever met. <laughs> so, oh, well, so uh, so well, I was given a dictionary as a child to read for fun. So <laughs> that's, I will tell you everything about my life. Yes. Okay. You're, you're left, right? You're very left brain. So you're going to be fighting that all the time. So if you really got 
how well if you're uh, so what's really irritating you right now about working upside down, no, not knowing what you're doing is that your left brain can't help you. So and it's unable to help you and it's probably frustrated. So you've really got to focus on shapes is the idea as you work upside down. It should yeah. so after a while, you'll find it to be a relief because you can get your left brain to be quiet for a little while, right? Like just, my brain hurts actually, to be honest, <laughs> it's it actually, it's like, it's, and I haven't come to a couple classes because of other stuff. Right. So right. No, it's feeling a little rusty and all of that. Yep. So work upside down. I would recommend that you always work upside down. That oh, will God. become a relief because your left brain just knows to, it just gives up after a while. But yours is yelling at you. It's like, no, 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 no. I want to no, 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 no. I want to know what it is. I want to know what it is so I can evaluate it and project it and project my own ideas on it and then decide what it is, right? That's the left brain. It's a, oh, okay. It's a loud mouth pain in the butt, like in drawing. It's like totally helpful when you're trying to, you know, evaluate a situation when you're trying, I don't know, it can be helpful. But what you'll find is as you shut the left brain up, you're going to find that the right and you let the right brain in and you let it work properly you're going to find that the left brain and the right brain will ultimately work in concert together and the left brain will say right brain what can you tell me about this situation stop fighting it so much you'll be surprised it's really amazing when it happens but you have to but the first at first the right the left brain feels that the right brain is a threat so it's constantly trying to override it yeah yeah uh, no this is interesting I think as much as possible i would recommend drawing everything upside down you uh, when it happens you're going to explode in the most delightful way not in a bad way but you're oh bettina wonderful jackie yeah so jackie the other thing here notice these little dark stripes come here and then there's light so there's yeah. these eight shapes here. Yeah. Uh huh. It's like light. Ah, uh, yeah. Dark. Dark. Light. Dark. Light. Mm hmm. All of these things exist together in concert. Light and dark. A little bit of country, a little bit of rock and roll. Okay, and then the last thing I will leave you guys with is something I posted on my Facebook page just a little while ago, uh, which is great and appropriate for this thing. So here on, where is it? It's a little video that a mother in Scotland. Okay, are you oh, ready? Looks on great. Are you ready? <laughs> Wait, here. It's just a boat. Mom, it's a fucking boat. <laughs> oh, it's so much. Is it cursing? It's just a boat. Mom, it's a fucking boat. It's a fucking goat. It's hysterical. <laughs> This is the 
the same woman who posted the picture of her young daughter who's like five years old arguing desperately to go to the pub i want to go to the pub mom you can't go to the pub you're a child <laughs> but why i want to go why i want to go to <laughs> why <laughs> why well, obviously she's a grown-up person in a child's body, so she should That's hilarious. pay God. attention. It's so fucking attention wrong. to people like that, the old souls and stuff trying to get out. A goat. No, it's a fucking goat. <laughs> <laughs> but why? No, not that why? Oh, my God, mom. I'm gonna that one. Yeah, I mean Have you guys? and on why why can't i go to the pub i'm six i'm six and a half you're just a child Absolutely wonderful. Oh, do you have your background and we can't see it? Yeah, I'm, I'm fixing that. All right. So great work next week. Maybe if you're all good, you can go to the pub. 